Kiwi fruit, kiwis, Chinese gooseberries, however you slice them, New Zealanders love them. The eponymous fruit is in season at the moment and Zespri are the company in charge of picking, packing and sending millions of kiwi fruit across the world. On a damp, slightly cold autumn day in Tepuki near Tauranga, grower Jeff Roderick walked us through the vines and explained what makes this part of New Zealand so good for growing kiwi fruit. I've looked all around the world at different um, kiwi fruit areas and talked to lots of growers from different countries and I think we've probably got optimum conditions around Tepuki. We've got um, good temperature, good temperature range, we're still getting wind to chill enough of it, which you need for flowers for next year, even though climate, changes, climate is changing slightly. We've got really good volcanic loam soils, we've got good runoff into gullies, so we're pretty frost free around this area. What do you have to do in the process of the kiwi fruit growing to make sure they're, they're healthy and they're good quality fruit? The first thing you need is good locations. The second thing I'd say is recognise the needs of the vines and probably overarching all that is having good labour. So we do the basics of um, fertiliser and now which is organic so we're, we're more compost and fish meal and stuff like that but in our case we're pretty minimalist in what we put onto our, onto our vines. You just nurture the vines all the way through and you basically be flexible because every year nature throws you a different curveball. So you this is true kiwi fruit country, with cultivated vines as far as the eye can see. Under the vines next to us is a team of pickers, about 20 of them. Each has a specially designed basket on a harness on their front, which they fill with fruit, unhooking a flap at the bottom to dump the fruit into a bin when their pack gets full. Four bins are on a wheeled base, which low tractors drive beneath the vines to collect. So how many fruit could you pick in a day here? Not as many as I used to. <laughs> I try and avoid picking them now, but um, no, seriously, we expect our staff to pick 400 kilos per labour unit per hour. As a gang, we'll be picking about, about 80,000 kilos today. So I did the tonnage once per person per season, it's pretty scary. What they're looking for is the perfect fruit, but what does the perfect fruit look like? So what would we look for in a good kiwi fruit and what will happen to it when it comes off the vine? Well the first thing you'd look for if you're a customer and you can't see that is the actual um, data on dry matter and sugar levels. So you've got to do it by taste. So you've got to trust us as an industry that we'll time the harvesting of the crop to optimise the sensory experience. A fruit like that, I would say, I mean I'm happy to grow a fruit like that. It's good, it's good shape, it's good colour. It'll look really good in the marketplace, sitting on the shelf, and all these fruit through here, if you look, are, they're, they're pristine looking fruit. The customer is the most important part of our whole chain of events. That if we don't have customers that put that piece of fruit in this shopping trolley in the Northern Hemisphere, then we don't have an industry. After the fruit is picked, the wooden bins are loaded onto trucks to be driven down the road to Trevelyan's Pack House. It's the largest single site pack house in New Zealand. James Trevelyan is the managing director and the son of John and Elizabeth Trevelyan. They started the pack house in the 70s, building it from just 186 crates of kiwi fruit to over 15 million trays a year today. If you look behind, that's the family home and um, I, we moved here as a family, um, I think it was about 53 years ago. Um, my mother and father bought this bare block of land and. And yeah, Dad was a passionate with, with, with trees, so he, he started planting. He took us through the journey of a kiwi fruit from when it arrives at the pack house. So when the fruit arrives, it's scanned in on site, so we know it's on site. We give it a home and we'll rest the fruit for a couple of days to heal the picking wound uh, at the top of the fruit. And then after a couple of days, we will then process it. We weigh the bin and we know how much fruit is in the process so we can balance the equation so we don't lose anything and then we um, we brush it to to remove the excess fur on the fruit then we sort it to a zespri standard and then we put it on a tray and put a traceability sticker on the box put it on a pallet so that box has a relationship with all those other boxes on the pallet um, we document it we strap it 
and then we put it through our cool chain so we are essentially slowly cooling it down to its target temperature. And then we will receive orders from Zespri and then we match those orders with the fruit that is, is right for that order essentially. When we tip it out of the bin, with the gold variety there can be soft fruit that we need to take out of the population so we spread it all out and then we look for those that um, are explosive or unsound. We, we'll put it under, uh, under cameras and those cameras then are looking for defects in the fruit and then from there the population gets separated. If the cameras aren't happy with what it sees but unsure it'll go to the human eye if the camera says, ah, oh, I don't see anything wrong with this, it'll just go straight down the process and be packed into a, into a tray. Once sorted, packed and labelled, the fruit are baled up and begin the next part of their journey to the port of Tauranga. Each individual box has a label printed on it to tell you where it has come from and where in the world it's going to go. When they reach the port, the vans and crates are scanned in. Ian Mearns, the chief executive of Tauranga Kiwi Fruit Logistics, takes us to the bridge of the cargo ship and explains what happens. So what we're doing is we're pre-receiving cargo to be loaded onto the ship, and we normally start pre-loading before the ship arrives. So um, when the product is arriving on the wharf, it's going through some, um, some data entry processes and some quality checks, and then getting presented um, to load at the ship. Okay, so we've um, got a call stall here, which is uh, can store around about um, 5,000 pellets of kiwi fruit, uh, and we use that to um, pre-assemble the fruit for loading during the night. Uh, it's a new store, um, was commissioned in 2018, and um, yeah, it's, it's the latest technology for um, keeping fruit at the right temperature. Typically on a, on a ship, we're loading about 5,500 pellets of kiwi fruit, uh, and to load 5,500 pellets of kiwi fruit, we've got um, around about 30 people involved um, from a manning perspective and the ship will take between 24 and 36 hours to load and we're loading up 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So as soon as it arrives, um, it's loaded and on its way. I suppose what I, what I uh, typically describe them as is like a car park building. It's just a whole lot of layers um, of loading fruit uh, and on one deck and then closing that deck and loading another deck and another deck and another deck. So it's um, yeah, just like a car park building inside. So you can see the pallets, uh, people scanning yeah. the pallets down there. Um, what's happening? Okay, so it's the next part of the scanning process on the wharf in terms of our data capture. So we're scanning the pallets onto the ship in a specific space. Um, and that when the tally clerk is scanning the pallets, it's making sure that as well that these pallets should be loaded for the ship. Um, and then when the ship is completed, um, it's part of the documentation process. Um, so um, we're telling the, the arrival port that all these pallets are in these, this space so they know where everything is on the ship. Four cranes on the ship begin to hoist the kiwi fruit into the hold, each crate dangling nervously as it's winched high over the side of the ship and lowered into the cavernous hold. This ship will start its journey tomorrow. The sh ship will be going to Japan first to discharge in two ports in Japan and then it will be going on to uh, Korea to discharge. The ship will take about two weeks to reach its first destination. A technician on board will monitor the kiwi fruit closely, keeping an eye on how warm or cold they are and adding amounts of ripening gas to sections to ensure when the fruit reaches its destination it's ready to eat. Stuart Ede, Zespri Technical Operations Manager, explains. So when it arrives in destination, the, the product starts to get discharged and then uh, as soon as the product's been cleared through customs, we'll have uh, checkers that are basically inspecting around 5% of the product and they're um, also getting an indication of what that firmness is and they're basically then delivering straight out the door. Um, but this product doesn't sit around. The idea of the whole Kiwi Start program, uh, which is the fruit that we're conditioning, is that it's to get onto the retail shelves and um, as, as quick as possible, really. The kiwi fruit from orchards in Tauranga will end up as far away as Europe. I asked Jeff Roderick where is the furthest away he has seen his kiwi fruit. I've seen them in Eastern Europe and I've seen my fruit offloaded off wharves in um, Japan, saw some in Los Angeles six months ago, nine months ago. Do you feel proud to see it there? Definitely feel proud. That's the whole reason of our existence is to do that. And that's the whole the connection thing that we should have with our customers. And yeah, of course it makes you feel proud.